Our next step is to figure out how to run our depth first for each method. And things are getting a little bit cluttered here, so I'm going to just kind of fold up some of these methods that we've defined before. Constructor, insert, and contain seem to be working okay, so we'll focus on depth first for each here. This one's a bit of a doozy. Binary search tree runs depth first in order traversal when the depth first for each method is run with no option or the in order option. So it tells us something, but let's see what's actually going on inside the spec code here. We call for each on the values to insert. We insert each of those, regenerating the same tree as we had before. We run depth first for each passing in a callback function here, this anonymous arrow function, which calls the push method on our empty test array, right? So as we run a depth first traversal of this tree, we should be pushing in each value. And then we're expecting the test array to equal this value here. So let's take a step back for a second and talk about what depth first search is really doing. And in this case, we're gonna focus on in order traversal. In order basically just means first we process the left tree, then we process the value of our current node itself, and then we process the right tree. So if we were to process this tree in a depth first manner, in order, we would start with 20. We'd say, okay, let's look down the left if it has one, great. Let's do the same thing here, look down the left if it has one, continue on down until we get to a node that doesn't have a left child starting with zero, right? And that's why we end up with zero as our first value in the array. That's the first value that we actually call push on. First value, we invoke this callback. Then, since uh, zero has been pushed, didn't have a left child, we called it on the value itself. Now we call it on the right child. When we get down to one, this doesn't have a left, so it processes its own value. It doesn't have a right and our recursion can kind of bubble up this way. So we always go in that order. In order meaning left child, current node's value, then right child. Let's see if we can make that happen. So depth first for each, what does it take? Well, here it's taking a callback function. Let's just call it that for now, callback. And we said that if there's a left child, then we want to process that left child, which was just, again, moving down to the left child and rerunning this process. So that's actually going to be a recursive call, this dot depth first for each, sorry, this dot left dot depth first for each. We call that recursively on its left child, passing in the same callback. Then, after we've done it for the left side, we say this dot, well, hmm, let's think about this for a second. We don't want to call recursively on itself. That would result in a blown call stack, a sort of infinite recursion. What do we actually want to do? Well. It looks like we just want to run this callback function that's being passed in on the value of the current node. So let's actually just say callback, which we're assuming is going to be a function. Let's invoke it on this dot value. Okay. And then finally, if there's a right child, then we do the same thing we did for the left child except on the right side of the tree. Save that, see where we are. Oh, it looks like we are passing that one. So when it's run with no option or the in order option, we should run the in order traversal. Now we didn't look at the in order option here, but it seems to be passing anyway. Let's just double check and make sure that we're not missing anything important. So first we call depth first for each just with a callback function passed in. Then we're calling depth first for each with a callback function and the in order option.
Okay, so that's working. Let's look at what comes next. Which one are we failing at this point? Depth first pre-order traversal is run with the pre-order option. Okay, so let's talk about that uh, high level. Pre-order basically means we run the same basic depth first traversal, except that we always process the current node before looking at its left and its right children. So we should be able to do the exact same thing down here. Let's copy that. Except we move this up above the left side traversal. So this would be first run the iterator function, the callback that's passed in, then traverse down the left side of the tree, and then traverse down the right side of the tree. Let's save that. Okay, so what's happening now? Now we've broken everything, right? And it looks like that's because of this option that's being passed in. So let's take a closer look at that. We're expecting it to run the pre-order, which we've defined here, only if pre-order is passed in as the second argument to the depth first for each function. So this takes not just a callback, but also an order. And let's wrap this whole thing here in a conditional. This is our pre-order where it does current value, then left, then right. Let's wrap that in a conditional where we say if order is equal to this string here, pre-order. And if we go back, now we're passing in order again, but it looks like we're not passing pre-order. Let's dive into that a little bit more expected this giant function here or this giant array to equal okay it starts with 20 then it goes to 15 then 5 then 0 then 1 hmm what's happening okay so it goes it expected to get 20 then 15 then 5 and we're giving it 20 then 0 then 1 okay 20 then 15 then 5 let's take a look at that So we should be calling this on our root node, collecting that, and then going down and collecting uh, the value on the left side. But we are going all the way down and collecting our zero. So we do collect the current node here, but then we dive all the way down to the left side of the tree and it looks like it's not really respecting the fact that we gave it pre-order from before. So what we actually want to do is pass along that order that we have here every time we make a recursive call. So let's do that. run all the specs and we're still not quite there yet all right let's take a look at our error message again now we're expecting 20 15 5 0 okay so we're getting closer to equal 20 15 5 0 1 hmm looks pretty close but they're not quite equal let's see is there anything we forgot let's take a closer look at what those values are supposed to be they want to see 20, 15, 5, 0, 1, 14. We're giving them 20, 15, 5, 0, 1, 1. Oh, interesting. So we've got duplicated values here. Let's see why that would be. Why are we getting duplicated values? So if the order is pre order, we first call a callback on this value. Oh, so. Looks like this is happening down here in addition to our pre-order. Let's fix that. It 
say if order is equal to, actually, you know what? Let's just wrap this all in an else. So that we don't run both at the same time. Let's save that, and it looks like we're passing that one. If we run all, we're passing both in order and pre-order. Finally, post order, same basic thing. Let's grab this. Post order is the same thing, except we do the callback here after traversing the left and right children. So let's take this, move it down below the right side recursive call, and just like that. Depth first is done. Now, we never said anything about in order because it should still work if no order is passed. Uh, but this will still run in order traversal even if they give a value that is, say, misspelled or something that we didn't code in here. Uh, let's say they, they wrote post order, but they forgot the hyphen. It might be confusing to our users. Uh, if they pass in a value that's just off by a little bit and they get the in order traversal. So let's make this a little bit more explicit. When we run in order traversal, we're only going to do that if the order is equal to in dash order or if order is undefined. And by saving that, we didn't break anything, but if someone were to misuse our program or call something that isn't there, they wouldn't see an inexplicable in order traversal. Maybe one last thing we'd want to do is otherwise, let's throw a helpful error that says unrecognized order arguments. Still working, but now our users will get a helpful error message if they do something wrong.